So now we will use this adaptive sampling size uh, or dividing the experiment into small pieces and taking decisions after each one of these pieces. Uh, when we are comparing differences in means or proportions or, or hazards in two samples. Okay, so uh, let's say that you are developing a new drug for lowering uh, cholesterol concentration in blood and we would like to detect a decrease of 10 mg per deciliter in the cholesterol level between the new drug and the reference one. So the standard deviation of the population, let's say it is 20 mg uh, per deciliter and we would like to divide the experiment into five sequential experiments and each one of them is using all the data available and we will perform four interim tests and if at any of these tests there is much evidence in favor of the new drug we will stop and in this way we, we save money and, and it is more ethical because we are not testing all individuals so we start uh, by doing the design uh, as if there is a single test at the end so this is the standard uh, sample size calculation that we did when we were computing differences between means. So we would need in total 85 uh, individuals. And now we will divide these 85 individuals into five stages. So in each one of the stages we will use 17 uh, samples. So after each one of the subgroups we will perform an interim hypothesis test. And if there is enough evidence for the difference, we, we will stop. Okay, so let us uh, number the interim test as uh, K, so from 1 to capital K, and then at each one of the stages we will compute this set. So this is a statistic that it is simply uh, the sum of all the responses up to that stage in both groups and we compute the difference and we see that if there is not uh, a lot of difference then this uh, subtraction will give a value close to zero and, and then it is normalized in this way and so if the null hypothesis is true then this is uh, distributed uh, with this uh, mean uh, and a standard deviation one. Okay, so the procedure is as follows. So in the interim tests, we will compare the absolute value of set K with respect to some constant. And this constant is, is, a, is a constant times the square root of the total number of, of stages divided by our current stage. And if it is larger than this, then uh, we decide that it, uh, uh, there is enough evidence in favor of the new drug and uh, we reject the null hypothesis. And otherwise we continue to the, to the uh, next stage. In the final test, uh, uh, we will uh, make this comparison. Actually, it is the same one as this one. And this constant depends on the number of stages and uh, the uh, type 1 error, so the false positive rate, and uh, takes into account the error inflation, the type 1 error inflation that occurs because of the multiple testing and the use of accumulated data. So this uh, constant is given by table, it has been uh, so if you go to the original paper, you will see how uh, this is calculated. But an uh, important thing is that it is a number that goes more or less from, uh, let's say, for uh, 0 0.05, that is a very typical threshold, it is around 2. For 1%, for it, it is around 2.5 or a little bit larger. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and for instance here, uh, we have uh, how it works. So at the beginning, uh, the threshold 
that we use to reject the null hypothesis is larger than the one that we use at the end. So this is time, and what we see is that we can uh, stop the, the the we can stop the the test much earlier if there is a lot of evidence. So the threshold here it is much larger. And, and then the number of samples, we have to also increase it. So uh, what we have calculated before, this one here, is the one if we do a single group, a single experiment. But uh, uh, So this is the 85. But the number of, because we are doing multiple testing, we have to increase that number by a bit. And this a bit is by this uh, coefficient that again it is given by by a table and this table is uh, given by the uh, number of uh, stages that you will have and also the the confidence level and also the statistical power so you have and, and it is a little bit larger than one so just a little just a few more samples to account for the fact that you are doing multiple testing. And so, for instance, in our case, uh, we had uh, five uh, stages with a confidence level of, of 95% and a statistical power of 90. So we go to here, five stages, and a confidence uh, alpha is 0. 0 0.05, so it is this number here. So we will need a few more, so 87, so we increase it to 88, and because it has to be a multiple of of 5, we round it up to, to 90 in, in total. This is not per group, this is, uh, yeah, this is per group, so in both, uh, in both uh, drugs. Okay, so, but at each stage, we will analyze 18 people in each one of the groups. So this kind of design is called O'Brien and Fleming's test. And, and then, uh, so we were stopping if there is a lot of evidence in favor of our drug. What happens if there is a lot of evidence that uh, the drug is not effective? So we may also stop it. And so if we realize that the drug is not so helpful, we may stop the 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 we may stop the experiment earlier, so that um, because adding more individuals probably will not help any anyway. So uh, how to make these decisions also at the subgroups? This is called the inner wedge test. It uses the same statistic as before, so this is the same one as in the O'Brien Fleming. And but now we have two constants. Okay, so uh, the test is parameterized by a constant delta that has to be chosen. So this delta is somewhere between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. If we choose delta equals 0, it is the O'Brien Fleming. And if delta is 0 0.5, it is the Pocox test. And you may have heard about these ones. And then uh, there are a number of constants involved that depends on delta, it depends on the number of, of, uh, of stages, depends confidence level and power. And all these CW1, CW2 are constants that are uh, given by tables. Uh, here you have the CW1, CW2 uh, constants. And well, we see that they are close to 2 and close to a, a little bit smaller than one or a little bit larger than one depending on what is delta and, and the procedure is as follows okay so uh, at every test at, at every stage if set k is larger than bk then we stop because uh, we uh, have a lot of evidence that the drug is useful if it is a smaller than AK, then uh, we stop again because uh, we have a lot of evidence. Uh, we don't think that by adding more individuals, 
uh, we will be able to show that our drug is effective. And then in the final test, we simply compare to BK. Okay, so uh, it looks like this. So it has the same behavior as before. So to stop because we want to reject, uh, because we want to reject uh, the null hypothesis uses a high threshold in the first stages and then uh, you see why it is called the inner wedge so the inner wedge means at some point we will stop the experiment because we think that by adding more uh, individuals we will not be able to reject the null hypothesis anyway here it says uh, accept null hypothesis you know we can never accept it but uh, yeah, you, you get the idea. So if there is very little evidence in favor of our drug, there is no point in continuing further. Um, and this is the, the kind, uh, this is the, the shape of BK and AK when delta is 25. And here you have the different constants that I was mentioning before. And here you have more, uh, more ones. Uh, this is for uh, a statistical power of 80%, this is for a statistical power of 90%. And then again, the sample size has to be increased, and it has to be increased by this number r, and r is also given in the table. It is a little bit larger than 1, and it depends on how many stages you will have. So, in our example, let's say that we have delta equals 0, and, and then uh, we uh, compute dr, dr is 8, we will have uh, 5 interim uh, 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 tests and we are using a statistical power of 80% so with 0, 5 stages, this r is, is this one, so 12 uh, sorry I made a mistake Yeah, I don't know now which one it is, but you look into the table. Okay, now, so uh, we need 96 individuals per group in each one of the two drugs, and uh, because uh, it has to be a multiple of 5, we round it up to 20. Okay, so what if we are uh, comparing proportions? So uh, what if uh, in our cholesterol example, uh, we calculate the proportion of responders and respond, someone responds if the cholesterol level drops more than 30 milligrams per deciliter and we wonder if at least 40% of the people respond to the new drug how many individuals do we need to, to involve in the experiment if we plan to perform uh, this experiment in 10 sub-stages, sub 10 subgroups Okay, so we uh, start doing the design as if uh, we could do it in, in only one. So this is the standard sample size calculation for proportions, and we would get 386 per group. Okay, so now uh, we define this variable, this set k. This set k can be directly used in the O'Brien Fleming's test or the inner wedge test. So we can follow this procedure the one of Brian Fleming that is this one so uh, the set k and, and the constants that we need to make the comparisons are the ones of the Brian Fleming or the inner wedge so yeah so uh, and now for the sample size the sample size uh, we simply have to take the to borrow the constants from the from the O'Brien Flemings, for instance. So uh, we calculated 386 times the extra uh, uh, the extra samples that we need for the multiple comparisons. So this is 400, and we need 401 divided by 10 in, in each one of the subgroups in the stages. So we will round it up to 41. But uh, you see that we don't, uh, so in total we will need a lot, but if we see that there is a lot of evidence that the, the number of responders is larger uh, uh, than 40%, 
then uh, we um, uh, we can stop the experiment. So this is pretty useful again. What about in Hazard? So in Hazard, uh, we are developing a new pacemaker battery, and the design is successful if it lasts at least 30 times more than the reference one. So how many pacemakers do we need to test for 10 years of both kinds to show that the new design is better than um, than the reference one with a confidence level of 95% and a statistical power of 90%. So we would use a survival analysis here and we will perform five interim tests and after 10 years we expect that 30% of the reference bat batteries are still working and 60% of the new batteries are still working. So uh, you may remember from the survival analysis test that uh, what we are comparing here is, are the different hazards. The hazard is, is the instant probability of failing, of running out of battery. And, and then, again, I, I don't want to get too much into the details of this calculation. We will see them a bit, but what we, we will come out is with a set K variable that can be used in the O'Brien Flemings or the inner wedge test. Okay, so let, let denote as dk the total number of failures in both groups up to the k uh, test. So uh, let us index the failing subject as i. So ti will be the failing time in the i individual. Uh, R i1 and R i2 are the remaining number of samples in both groups at time t ti. Uh, delta i2 uh, will be 1 if the ith individual is from group 2 and 0 if it is from group 1. So we are mixing the two sets of individuals and, and uh, we will have a, a variable that will tell us from which group it is coming from. Then the log rank statistic at the kth interim analysis is calculated like this way. And the observed information available is, is this one. And we have everything up to here. So we can calculate this at k, and this at k is the one that we use in the O'Brien Flemings or the inner wedge test. Okay, so how many samples do we need for that? Okay, so uh, we uh, make the calculation for the survival uh, analysis and for the survival we want to detect at the end of the of the 10 years 60% uh, of the new batteries will be working or 30% will be working so 30% uh, uh, in the second group the, the reference one this doesn't mean that the new battery will be this effective what we are doing is if it is this effective then we want to be able to see it. This is the general philosophy in sample size calculation. Okay, so for, for that, after all these calculations that you are referred to the to the survival analysis uh, videos to see how these are calculated, we will need 34 uh, individuals in each one of the groups. Okay, so let us assume that we will use an inner wedge test with five interim tests. So uh, and delta will be equal to zero. So uh, we will divide, uh, so we will increase the sample size to account for the multiple testing, and uh, we will have eight individual in each one of the stages because we have uh, 39 divided by 5, we would round it up to 8. So that means that we will make five uh, tests. Uh, with n equal 8 people in each one of the groups. And, and then, if uh, we don't have enough evidence that the, that the pacemaker, the new battery, is better than the previous one, we don't go into the second stage. Okay, so uh, this would be all for all the uh, examples of two sample comparisons uh, using adaptive uh, sample size. 
and in the next uh, topic we will re-estimate the sample size.